But Chris is the founder of the nonprofit organization, The Cassie Project. This project is affectionately named after the late Cassandra Betts, a pregnant mother of one who became another victim of domestic violence. The Cassie Project serves as an outlet for all survivors who are striving towards and struggling with healing. Chris offers survivors an opportunity to share their stories in various ways. Some may choose drama, um, some may choose storytelling, poetry, or even to simply talk with Chris on the couch. Um, on, on the Couch with Chris is an online media and entertainment show focused on getting to know the people in, and around the community. On the Couch also serves as a source for advocating the resolve of domestic violence. Through the past year, the Stacy Foundation and Cassie Project have combined efforts to make an even bigger impact in and around the community. Please welcome with me, Chris. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I am Chris Stiles, the visionary uh, on the couch with Chris, and our objective is to connect survivors with other survivors um, to start sharing their stories so that they can start healing and that they can start living. This is so weird. I know. Sorry. I'm the pulpit. should be in the pulpit. Um, I mean, not. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, this is my couch. And what we do is we take the couch, the Cassie couch, which this one is affectionately called, named after Cassandra, who is, of course, one of our silhouettes today. Um, and we take it around to places where survivors want to share their story. And we invite them to come up on the couch with us, talk to us, share their stories, so that they can start healing and living. After they finish, you know, a scribble on the couch. These are the signatures of survivors and supporters survivors of sexual and domestic abuse. And their signature on this couch symbolizes them letting that portion of their life go. They start, you know, they can leave it and move on to start their healing. So that's what we're going to do today. We actually have a survivor here with us who has made amazing strides in her um, recovery and her life after abuse. I have her little bio on my phone, so you know, I'm not reading text messages. Um, I'd like to present to you Miss uh, Michelle Bless, author Michelle Bless. And she has written a book called Out of the Darkness, The Michelle Bless Story. She is a survivor of sexual and domestic violence. And she has used that to strengthen her to tell her story and share and to help others move towards life after abuse. So I today we have her here and she's going to come on the couch with Chris, the Cassie couch, and she's going to share her story with us. And this is the way it works when we have our um, presentations and our events. Survivors come up, they talk, they share, they sign. So please put your hands together for author Michelle Bass. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you know, the, the actual survivors themselves, the physical, mental, and sexual abuse, understand that you can get out of that situation, that you can leave. So if you could take a moment and, and share with us a little bit of, of your DV background and how you got out. Well, I'm a survivor of domestic violence twice. The second time I was left for dead, so I barely made it. It was, was only because of the grace of God. I had decided to tell my husband at that time that I didn't want to be with him anymore because he was very abusive. So when I said that to him, I had my back turned. He called my name, and when I turned around, that's all I remember. When I woke up, he had knocked me out unconsciously, and while I was out, he beat me. So when I woke up, I barely could move, and I was bleeding blood. And he tormented me, <laughs> solemnized me, beat me, raped me, choked me, 48 hours, nonstop. He made me do things to him. I had uh, not a broken jaw, but it was fractured, and my nose was broken, black eye, um, cracked rib, and he was making me do all type of sexual things to him. I'm not gonna go into detail. Use your imagination of someone forcing you to do something that really you can't do, but you have no choice. Or read the book. Read the book. Yeah. Read the book. Um, we had like five or six bedroom house, so he would choke me. He, he was like six foot five, so he would lift me up by his hand, by my neck, and he would choke me. And I remember going out, and I can be in one room, but when I wake up, I'd be in another room. So I stopped counting after 17, 18 times that he would choke me out. And um, I didn't sleep for 48 hours because he was beating me for 48 hours and um, called me all types of foul names. Um, so I was able to get out of the house uh, the first time. Uh, I ran out, it was early in the morning. Um, a mailman was out by his little car and I run to him and, and, and say, and let me say this real quick. He, when we got married, he moved me to a, t a different city and state. So I didn't know anyone in, this, in that city. I didn't know where I was. More isolation. I, absolutely, he, he had took me away from my family, away from my church. Uh, no one knew what was going on. And so when I ran out, I seen a park and I seen this mailman. Um, my hair over my head, I'm bloody. I'm like, can you please help me? And he just pointed and said, well, there's a police station yonder. Like, just run through the park and you'll see the police station. But I'm seeing my husband running towards us. So I'm like, so I went towards the mailman's car. Like, can you open your door? Can you let me in? And he said to me, I can't let you in. This is a federal, federal, um, you know, for the job or whatever. A vehicle, I'm sorry, yeah. And I, I looked at him like, are you kidding me? I couldn't hardly talk. My husband came over there, he lifted me up, he threw me over his shoulder, and I'm screaming to talk to my mom. No one's outside. The, the mailman jumped in his little car and drove away. And didn't call the police. And didn't call the police. My husband took me back in the house, and he dropped me head first. And I, my head hit the ground, and then he drug me in, and that's all I remember. Then I woke up again, and of course he's raping me, called me all kinds of names, and he's beating me. I went unconscious again, and then I woke up again. And this time, I was on my stomach, and my body felt twisted. And he, he was in the kitchen, and he was talking to himself. And he had these knives and hatchets. They were like 15 or more. And he had them lined up, but they were on top of garbage bags. So he's in the kitchen seeing how I'm, I'm nothing, I'm trash, I'm a bee, I'm no good, and he's getting ready to kill me. And he's sharpening these knives. And he's saying, yeah, I'm gonna cut that bee up, I'm gonna cut her up and put her in the garbage bags. And then I'm gonna put it in the car, I'm gonna drive around different communities, I'm gonna throw her bodies, body parts in different dumpsters. And I said, God, please help me. 
get away from this man. And I just got the strength to ease myself up. He didn't even hear me. He was so caught up in what he was doing that I was able to get out again. And I'm telling you, I didn't have any strength, but I was given strength. I ran outside, and this time, it was a street full of people. It was business as usual. It was people one walking around driving their cars. And I seen a fire truck. And the fire truck seen me because I just fell in the street screaming. And of course he runs out again. But he tried to pull me by my hair to bring me back in the house. But he couldn't move me. He couldn't lift me. And I'm screaming and people come around like, Oh my God, what are you doing? And then the fire truck stopped. And they got out of the car and said, let that woman go, what are you doing, are you crazy? And then he wrenched again and he was able to pull me. But he drug me back into the house and I'm like, somebody help me, don't let him do this to me. He's gonna kill me, he's gonna kill me. But he drug me back in the house and slammed the door and locked it. But it was only a few minutes, there was a bang on the door and it was the police. And they said, you have five seconds to open this door. We were told that a woman was dragging here against her will. And I got lucky. The rest is history. The rest is history. Here you are. Well, praise God for that savior. Yes. Thank you for being here. Thank you for believing in him, because if you didn't, you did not call him. Thank you so much for showing up again. And um, today, we're not going to have Michelle Bless on the couch because she did the first time she shared with us at the Love the Community Project. But um, we also have, quickly as we um, disband and remove the couch so that we can, you know, get started with the real reason that we're here. Um, the Back to Life Fund is presented by the Cassie Project and it's a fund that's in place for survivors who are trying to move into life after abuse for survivors who may need assistance with their first month's rent or with uh, child care or things like that. So for more information on the Cassie Project, uh, it, you can please log on to the Cassie Project, um, dot org. that's K-A-S-S-I-E, keeping all survivors safe, informed, and emancipated. And of course, there's a link on the Ryan's website. Thank you so much for your time. Got it.